Welcome to the IS3 Podcast. I am Scribble. I'm here with Intent, and today we're going to get personal. So Intent, how personal do you want to get? How long it's gonna get. is your... I can't think of anything that's non-sexual. Well, <laughs> but, uh... you know what? It's just going to get in, in... It's going to get intense. Okay. Oh, 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 I like that. You played your name off in there. All right. That's right. Let's just yeah. scribble through that, all right? <laughs> anyway, they were bad at jokes. But uh anyway, like I kinda wanted to I kinda wanted to just make a podcast of uh pretty much like my life story. I just wanna I don't know, I don't know. I've been thinking about it for a while. Like I put up a good front, to be honest. The I really I don't know, I there's a there's a quote by Robin Williams. It's uh, behind behind every broken soul there's a fake smile or something like that. I gotta I'll look it up, but um, yeah, pretty much. I just want to give you like a, a rundown of of my life. You know, my my life has actually been it's been very hectic, and I've always slipped through the cracks somehow, yeah. and I, I have no idea how I do it. Like I'm I'm 32 years old. I I just turned 32 back in July, and I've mm-hmm. never had a job technically. Like I've owned a company. I, I've worked. Like I worked McDonald's as a teenager. I, I worked Walmart for like two months, three months, something like that. But I, I worked Walmart like three years ago, and before that, I owned my company. And then before that, I was a teenager, so I did the McDonald's right. thing. So like I've, right. I've never, I've never worked a job. I've never, and it's, it's baffling whenever whenever I say that to people, or like whenever I just hear it. It's like I've, I'm 32 years old and I've never worked. It's mm-hmm. it's just it's weird. Like I've never said, "Oh, I gotta go to work," you know, or I can do this after right. work. Right. I've never had to say that, and which we'll get into. There's actually let me. I'm gonna try to find this quote real quick. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear the quote. Yeah. I hear it is. Uh, okay. Here's a quote by Robin Williams: "All it takes is a beautiful fake smile to hide an injured soul." And they will never notice how broken you really are. Wow, that's deep. It is deep, and I'm kind of like that uh, for multiple reasons, uh, which we're gonna get into right now. I guess <laughs> no, no better time than the present, right? So let's do it. Like I said, I'm 32 years old. The I lived the normal childhood life. The, in my time, I was born in the 80s. Uh, the my in my time, divorce is normal. So when I was like, I don't know, six, seven years old, the, my mm-hmm. parents got divorced and uh, right. it wasn't a big deal. I mean, well, I mean, it, it was a big deal, but it, it was common. Um, I was in, yeah. I don't know, first or second grade. I don't even remember. Uh, I was six. So I, was, I was probably in first grade, either kindergarten or first grade. And mm-hmm. uh, so, <laughs> and as a kid you don't you don't know what's going on with with that kind of stuff and the i went to school and i let oh i left my home went to school Mm -hmm. and then when i came then my mom picked me up after school uh just like i didn't ride the bus home or anything she picked me up after school and took me to a brand new apartment or it wasn't it was a duplex and i was like Uh um okay She's like, this is where we live now. And I said, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I mean, that was, it's the normal back then. I uh, still, right. like, it's more, it's, it's now you, it's, it was more normal back then it is now, than it is now. Um, it's really not even, like, normal because there's people, like, having kids and they're not even married. So, so there's no divorce involved, really. Um, mm-hmm. There's, they're either, they're either dating or, um, they're either dating or they break up. But there, it's it's rare that nowadays, not rare, I guess, just un, uncommon, not as common, uh, right. that people are married and having kids now. Uh, yeah, I do agree. I do agree with that. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah, I, so. there. There's a thing. I don't know. I heard it years ago. Babies having babies is what it was. Pretty much. Yeah. And, exactly. And like 15, 16, 14, 15, 16 year olds, you know, having babies. There mm-hmm. and there was- their their parents, which are now grandparents, are like twenty eight. 30 you know which is which is not the normal thing but uh, i guess it wouldn't be times change you know it wasn't normal for them 
but it, for our generation it was and then now it's it's just continuing but uh yeah yeah i actually i actually saw a study or heard about a study i guess that um there's a decrease in sexual activities uh for males in their mid 20s uh it was like wow. it was like 18 18 to 26 or something like that the the not sex drive but the i guess sexual activity has decreased uh-huh. in the last 10 years or five years something like that i don't know i'd, I'd have to look like don't hold me on quotes on that but uh, i'd have to look into it but it was something something about like uh sex or sex drive or something that has decreased in the last between these ages between in the last couple of years it's really weird yeah um, it's kind of weird though yeah so to get, get back, getting back on track to continue because the, there's story. the internet yeah uh, well, I mean, even still, like that'd be considered a sexual activity, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, to get back on track on my story, that uh, so yeah, I, I was probably six, seven years old. That we moved into mm-hmm. a duplex, and then from there we moved into a house, and or we moved into another duplex, and then a house, and all that kind of stuff, which is um, so I, up until like my teen years, like you know, I had a pretty pretty average life um actually i guess we'll, we'll step back before my teen years um yeah when i was i don't know i had to be it was elementary school i know that um from what i'm told from what my mom says i was six years old but um so when i was six i was having tantrums i guess is what what it was called um right. and so at school which well, you know who doesn't at six uh, but they, mm-hmm. I guess, I guess my level of tantrum was higher than normal, and so uh, the counselors and teachers and everybody suggested that my mom take me to a doctor and see see if the doctor has anything other to say than than or something something to say about it. And so, at six years old, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, uh, mm-hmm. which is a chemical. If you don't know what bipolar disorder is. Google is your oh, friend. No, <laughs> no, but it's a it's a chemical imbalance in your brain. So taking, uh, I've taken two years of psychology. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot you did that. So <laughs> so you know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, um, but for the people that didn't take two years of psychology, the bipolar disorder is a chemical imbalance in your brain where your anger skyrockets higher than normal. And your sadness or depression drops slower than normal. And mm-hmm. so you need to take medication to be in the middle and uh, or to balance it out. And uh, so at six years old, I'm diagnosed with this. And right. I get put well, on... That must have been hard to... Well, I mean, I guess you really didn't know really that young well, too. Oh, I mean, it. I, I'm, I'm a, I was six years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I, I have two kids myself. I have a, I have a seven year old and a ten year old. So, um, like I, I got they were they were six years old, like and mm. they threw tantrums. They one of them still one of them still throws tantrums, but like it was never, mm. it was nothing I couldn't control. You know, it's it's, it's like all right, you want to throw a tantrum? You know, go away for ten minutes, cool down, come back. You know. Right, they, right. But it was it was nothing I ever needed. It's like oh, the this infant almost is this child, itty bitty child at five six years old. He's throwing a tantrum. I need to go take him to a psychiatrist and get him on medication because he could have something. Like I I've never thought that, not not for a second. Like kids have tantrums. Everyone has tantrums. Everyone gets upset, you know, and. Maybe maybe it's because I do have this disease, and was why I thought it's like oh I don't need to take them because, you know like I I know how to handle it because I handle it myself. Mm-hmm. So that that could possibly be a thing. So anyway, getting back on track, at six years old I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and I take a medication called lithium citrate, um, yeah. which is. <laughs> I I couldn't take pills. I I had the worst time taking pills, which I'm I've gotten better at now. But um, as a growing up and everything, I could never take pills, 
and so they gave it to me mm-hmm. in liquid form, which tasted horrible. Like I still, mm. I, if I if I, I really think about it, I can I can still taste it, and I get the the what quivers or shivers, whatever. You know, you know when you mm-hmm. taste something nasty, like blah, 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 you know, and you can just that's what it, ugh, I can still do it. Um, yeah. So, which this kind of there's going to be a lot of back and forth on here. So, because one thing leads to another thing and then goes back to this thing. And okay. so, yeah, so taking lithium citrate, it's pretty much, for the most part, it's mercury and salt is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, that's not the actual ingredients, but that's pretty, much, that's pretty much what it is. And so, mm-hmm. being the typical kid, you know, I never brush my teeth. I've actually made a video about this before. Um, so I never brush my teeth. I'm taking this mercury salt mixture twice a day. And so it would just sit on my teeth and being mercury, it, it literally just rotted my teeth out. And Mm -hmm. so, uh, how old was I when, when this first happened? I think I was probably, I got, I think I got braces around my early teens, probably 13, 14, something like that. I got braces. Um, I had, my canines are really high. So I had to get braces and bring them down and all that. Um, right. And so after, after all that, I'm still taking this lithium citrate uh, liquid form, this mercury salt mixture, and take it twice a day. Typical kid, done brushes brush his teeth, eats candy, um, that kind of thing. And so I would take it in the morning. It would sit on my teeth all day long. And I'd take it at night, and it would sit on my teeth all night long, and it just rotted them out. And so mm-hmm. I started – they just started deteriorating and I started, I started losing my teeth. I'd bite into something and then a tooth would break. Um, and oh, so that, wow, just like that. Oh yeah. Easy peasy. Um, Shit. which there was actually, I have the full story on my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash C slash I scribble three. I think the, uh, I think the, uh, things called my tea story, like vlog my tea story or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, it'll give you the whole, I don't know, it's like 30 minutes long, 40 minutes long, but it gives you the whole details about my teeth. And so really? and you may not even know it, but like, I don't have teeth and it's kind of, I've learned to talk without teeth. Like I have a set of dentures. I never wear them um, just because they're mm-hmm. uncomfortable. But when you hear me talk, I, I can enunciate 98% of my words perfectly fine. Yeah. And you don't even notice that I don't, right. don't have teeth. Uh, okay, so skipping ahead, I mean, um, I would never, I would never notice. Yeah, you I, told me. There, there's a few words like words where my mouth must connect, like saying Z, like the letter Z. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I can't say it; I have to say it weird or say Z, uh, because right. because it just my mouth just physically does not connect to make the sound, and mm-hmm. it's like I can push my jaw up to do it, but that's about it. Um. A couple of like you and then you'll hear me whistle on some words and which I, i've noticed a lot through these podcasts um i whistle all the time and again like i'm not trying to it just i don't have any teeth so it makes a gap mm-hmm. whenever, whenever i right, say words right. and and makes a whistle um so continue on typical teen you know i i have the typical teenage um life uh, where I hate everyone, <laughs> and I, I hate everyone, and I know everything. You know, the, the typical teenager. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was always fighting and bickering with my mom. Um, I was always, um, you know, I was always just the typical teen. Like I'm, I'm right, you're wrong. I, I know what I'm doing. I do what I want. And so, uh, eventually, mom's like, okay, if you want to do that, then. To live in my house, you could either pay rent or you can leave. And I said, okay, mm-hmm. and I left. So I, was, I think I was 17. So I was, I was legally able uh-huh. to leave. Uh-huh. Uh, but I wasn't, I was legally able to leave, but I couldn't get an apartment or a house or anything because I was underage. So it's kind of, that's, right. that's a weird, yeah, yeah that's, that's a really weird uh, mixture right there. But <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm, I I leave my mom's house. I'm homeless. Uh, I have my teeth are rotting out because I'm cause I'm on this medic. I'm on this mercury salt mixture every yeah. day. Yeah. Um, 
and my teeth actually got so bad. I think I mentioned this in the podcast, or I mean in the uh, video, but my teeth got so bad that I would stop brushing them purposely because the plaque buildup was white and it made my mm-hmm. teeth look semi-normal. But mm-hmm. it, it, so if I did brush them, they like you could see all the all the enamel was rotted off. So it was just right. black holes and and um, patches and chips and everything everywhere. If I if I actually brushed them to remove the plaque and and everything, they it looked mm-hmm. it looked a lot worse that way. So I there's most of the time I didn't brush them purposely just so plaque would build up and they would look halfway normal. Mm-hmm. So here's where we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead. We're going to jump ahead and jump okay. back. Okay. So to continue with my teeth, they, I was probably, I don't even know how old I was, um, mid-20s, early mm-hmm. early to mid-20s, probably 23-ish, so about 10 years ago. Um, yeah. They, for years, probably at least four years, I was getting these terrible headaches, horrible headaches. Like it was... Uh, I would never wish that kind of pain on anybody. It hurt so bad, so much. Um, and it was like in my temple. And so I could, mm-hmm. if I pushed on it, it would relieve it a little bit. And you know those um, bottles of Tylenol that are like $5 and it's a liquid bottle and it's just two times the strength, cherry flavored. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. That, that's supposed to be for like multiple uses over multiple time periods and I was drinking two of those a day wow full bottles drinking them because it it hurt so bad that's crazy yeah and again like I I was horrible at taking pills and so I would always Mm -hmm. I'd get everything in liquid form I couldn't just go in and buy a buy a thing (laughs) buy a thing of uh, Advil you know um Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'm drinking. So now, so now on top of my rotting teeth, I'm drinking poison twice a day. I mean, Tylenol t- helps you. Like it's it's a mm-hmm. it's a medication. It's designed to help, but in massive doses, it's poison. <laughs> so, <laughs> which yeah. is which I think is hilarious. So I was drinking two of these bottles a day, and um, it just got so bad. That, um, I finally, people have been saying for years, like, why don't you go to, go to an oral surgeon, go to a, go to a dentist, go, go, go figure out what's wrong. And again, this is, this is in the, my teeth story on my YouTube channel. Um, but I was, I was starting to get like abscess. Like I had one that was like underneath my nose, like where my canine would be. And I just mm-hmm. kind of made like the side of my nose up to my eye kind of swell a little bit, like an abscess does. And yeah, so I I did exactly what you're not supposed to do, which I stood in the bathroom, popped it with a needle, and like drug my fingers mm. down my face to drain mm. this pus and blood and this poison out of my system from this abscess. And I, mm. I never do that. It's so dangerous to do. They go to a dentist and spend the money, spend the time. They have the dentist remove it or work it or whatever. It's, if you do it yourself, like I, it's so dangerous to do. So don't do don't do what I did. Uh, do do as I say, not as I do, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And so over time, like these abscesses are getting worse. And so now I'm now I think I wish I remember what side it was. I think it was my left side of my jaw I wake up Mm -hmm. one morning it's like 6 o'clock in the morning I'm waking up in extreme pain my mouth is swollen my head's hurting like um, this is this headache is daily it's not like here here and there it's 24-7 daily extreme pain in my temple because of of my rotting and I'll, I'll get to the explanation here in one at the end of the story but okay. um so i'm like man this hurts so much and now you know, i wake up i wake up from my headache in pain 
Um, and then I noticed my jaw swollen. I think I'm pretty sure it was my left side of my jaw. Um, I noticed it was kind of swollen. I'm like, okay, it's just another abscess. I'll pop it again. And so I'm, I'm looking around for it. Don't, don't notice anything. So an hour goes by. It's now 7 a.m. My face is doubled in size because of the swelling. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, well, this is a problem. And so um, I actually go to the hospital. Um, I waited like another hour. It's not going down. It's not getting better. It's still hurting. Everything hurts. It's hurting even more now because now my face is getting stretched out on top of my headache that I've had for two years, three years. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. Like I was in so much pain. And so I ended up going to the emergency room. They, they look, I, I have photos of this, which is also on the video of how, I think it was like a four or five hour period that a progression of how swollen my face is. Um, I take a photo. This is uh, this is ten years ago, so I was doing it with like a flip phone or something. So the 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 quality is pretty bad on the photo compared to what they are now. <laughs> Which sidestep? Did you upgrade to uh, iOS thirteen today? No, I don't Do have it. a. You, I, I think you have an iPhone eight. Or above. No, no, no it's uh, it yeah, it's uh, I think it's like six plus or something like that that it does it. Um, so okay. yeah, you're good on it. No, worth it. It's pretty cool. Uh, all right. So anyway, I'm at the hospital. They take me back in. They see how swollen I am. Uh, they give me like a half a pill of Vicodin uh, to help with the pain, mm-hmm. and then they give me a steroid shot in my butt, and mm-hmm. that hurt. <laughs> like the yeah. actual the actual <laughs> shot didn't hurt. It's it was about like two minutes after they gave Steroid me the shot. shots get sore and they burn. Oh yeah, and that's what it was. It was a burning. It was a burning hurt. They um, because they did it in my in my upper hip and my butt area, and so they gave me the steroid shot to help the swelling or to help fight whatever it is, and mm-hmm. it hurt so bad for like uh, I think I think at this point my mom was with me. I don't remember I. My mom was at the hospital thing at some point. I don't remember which point it was, but at some point she was there with me. And um, after they gave me the shot, I look over and I was like, man, this burns. Just like two minutes later, I was like, man, this burns so bad. It hurts so bad. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I think, okay, I think it was the first time because um, I think I only went to the, hot, to the ER once. Now, I'm, I'm trying to think back. This is 10, oh, 10 plus years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think of all the details. Uh, so, yeah, she she's with me at the hospital. And I get a steroid shot. And then they said, I need to go see an oral surgeon. Because they, they see my teeth. They're like, you need to go, you need to go see... Um, a tooth doctor, a dentist, an oral surgeon, they, you, know, you need to go see somebody about your teeth. Um, and I was like, okay. So so we ended up going to, well, we went to, went to a couple of different places. And um, all the doctors said that it is too bad. I will not work on, I will not work on you because it is too dangerous. Mm-hmm. And this is what they said. This is what a couple of them said. And then finally we went to, another oral surgeon and he said it's risky but yeah I'll I'll work on it so we scheduled for the next day to go in like my like at this point like it's been six hours so my face is swollen you know and yeah. um and it, like it's bad and so we go in we go in the next day like alright we're gonna put you under like you're gonna go under anesthesia cause you have to and we're gonna I'm gonna try my best to get all this infection out and poison and everything, and but we're we have to remove your teeth. And I said, how many? And they said, all of them. I said, okay. Uh, I mean, I in keep in mind, my face is swollen, and I'm I'm dealing with the pain and stretching of that, and I've had a headache for three years, three years straight. Like I I don't care what they do at this point. You know, just make it stop hurting. And so they. They put me under, they take all my teeth out, and um, I wake up, as soon as I wake up, 
instantly no no headache. I've never had a headache since they since that day. Never had a headache. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually had to do two sessions there where they put me under twice. The first session was the initial removal of all my teeth, and then the second right. session was like a cleanup thing. Like after my gums my gums kind of healed up a little bit and everything. They had to go back in, recut them open, shave down some bone fragments and all that kind of stuff for my jaw. Um, which, right. which is typical. And, uh, so, but what they said is that I'm very lucky to even be alive. There was so much poison and that's why I had the headache, headache in my temple. The poison from my teeth formed a tunnel or a passageway, so to speak, into my temple and was literally poisoning my brain and they said I was I was extremely lucky to even be alive because it was so bad and there's so much of it and uh-huh. so so that's kind of that story so now to jump back <laughs> uh, to when I was 17 you know I'm I know everything um, mm-hmm. I, I hate everyone and I know everything so I'm homeless for year two years probably um maybe even longer i don't i don't remember it's kind of i think it was about two years but broken up into things that um i was homeless for a good six months uh, or more mm-hmm. and then i stayed with a friend for a while and then kind of went back to school this, this is part of the thing i never graduated uh, high school either uh, one i didn't want to oh wow. and and two um, between not going to school and then um, being homeless and then trying to go to school when I could, I, I wasn't I wasn't just making up the times. So I would go, I'd drop out for a year, go back, and like it just it just wasn't wasn't for me. Uh-huh. And so eventually, it got the, oh my my last year I was there, um, they I actually got expelled for 180 days. Which would put me into next year, um, into the next school year. But in the next school year, I would be too old to even go to high school. So it's like, all right, it's done. Mm -hmm. Like you're done. Like there's no other options anymore. That you're too old to go to high school and you're expelled for until next year. So sorry. Um, And then also, I'm actually I actually just found this out about my for from my mom a couple couple months ago that uh, because of my with my bipolar disorder I've never blamed any of my actions on it I can never I never use my disorder as an excuse ever I've never done it because I I'm like I'm fully conscious of what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and these are my decisions not the diseases decisions you know right and I was very wrong (laughs) And so, I'm still not blaming it, but, I mean, it, it has a part, but I, I don't want to, I'm not saying, it's like, oh, my complete actions are, are because of this, is the, because of this disease, which, my actions are inflated because of this disease, but I'm still doing the actions, so I, I, yeah, I don't, that makes sense. yeah, like, I can, I can go on a rampage, I can, there's actually, I don't want to. I don't want to go into details about this person, but um, when I when I go on my rampage, so to speak, or my my peak of my mania, I, which is usually in the summertime, um, when I when I hit that peak of, of manic anger, they like I hit people like. I only take one blow at people and I hit them right where it hurts. Like I hit them in the hardest spot that again, and then I walk away like nothing ever happened. Um, for example, like I will, if you, if you tell me something personal or, um, something that you don't think I know about you or you just got over a condition. Um, I'll, I'll give this as an example. There's, there's one, there's one girl. She had, I'm not going to go into details about her, but she was a she was a school she was a school employee, and mm-hmm. apparently I don't remember this at all. But apparently she um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not befriended, but under, I guess understood would be the right word. She understood everything about me and my disease and, and everything. And Correct. she, ha- she had a disease which made her, um, disabled in a, in a way that she mm-hmm. had a couple, she had a couple of small disabilities, which I never bothered. I, this, this is all hearsay. Cause I, I don't remember this at all, but, uh, but it came from my mom. So it's gotta be true, you know? Um, yeah. so she, she had this disease. I never said anything about it. And one day in my, my manic, one of my manic rages that I made fun of her about it, her most sensitive area. And I hit her right where it hurts and then walked away. Like nothing ever happened. Like even to this day, like I said, I have no clue about this. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I have no idea. Like, I don't remember any of it. And, but I mean, that's, that's how I do things. You know, like I hold on to your most sensitive information and then I hit you right back with it whenever I need to. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, I mean, that's, that's, that's the disease that does that. Like you can call people names right. all day long. You know, that's, that's the typical person calling people names uh, or talking, talking shit behind their back or whatever, uh, or to their face even. Yeah, that's, that's everybody. But when you hold off on everything and you hit people in the most sensitive area and walk away like nothing ever happened, that's 100% the bipolar disorder disease. So my my teen years, that's all the whole manic phase. That, that, was, that, that was the most manic, I guess. Um, so mm-hmm. bouncing onto that, I don't know. That was like, what, a 20-minute story? I'm only, we're only halfway done. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm getting so tired. <laughs> Um, I'm about to fall asleep. Yeah. So, so now we're out of that. Like I'm, like I can no longer go to school. I can't. It's impossible for me to graduate, um, because I'm expelled and I'll be too old to go back. Um. So, the I think it was like either the last year. I I had to been the last year I was there. Either the last year or the year before. Um. I met this girl. That we were high school sweethearts. And after I got expelled, we stayed together. The and she really, I really got to give her thanks to everything, uh, like everything about me. Like I have to give her complete thanks about it, or uh, for it, because without her, like who knows where I'd be. Mm-hmm. Um, they she helped me get off the streets. She helped me get off drugs. She helped me get back to a level ground, and I owe everything to her. Um, and so she, luckily she graduated. Uh, so after she graduated, she, she, I, I, at this point, I think I was, I don't, I don't remember if I was, I think I was working at McDonald's at the time. I was probably 18 ish. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was, I think I was working for my friend that I started competing with and I was working at McDonald's at the same time. Um, and so, right after high school, the she moves in. She graduated in May. Um, moved in in August, I think. Um, and at this time, like I, I was barely skimming by. You know, I was staying at a, I was staying at one of those hotels that you can that you're, you can pay a month for, it's like run, one of the rundown oh, hotels. Right. Uh, oh, so, right. so I was staying there. Uh, I was like four hundred dollars a month for cable stay and. Every, everything was like 400 bucks um which i was working two jobs at the time so not a problem so uh, she moves in and she gets pregnant that september i think oh, it's september october so right oh, after right out of high school she gets pregnant which i guess which i guess is good you know we we waited until she got out of high school so she wasn't preg- so she was at least able to graduate you know and she wasn't pregnant uh-huh. during school and all that so, right out of right out of high school, she was pregnant. Two month, three months out of high school, she was pregnant, and uh, which is actually kind of the story behind that's kind of funny because um, she was right out right out of school. She wasn't quite moved in, but 
she wasn't staying at her parents full time. She was kind of, you know, I'll stay here for a few days, I'll stay at my mom's a few days, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so at right after high school, they she went on a European tour with her family. Oh, wow. Which, um, which I, I guess would be, I guess it was like her celebration for graduating. Uh-huh. Um, so she did the whole European tour thing. She went um, Ireland, Scotland, England, London. I think they're the same place. I don't know. But she did the whole wow, tour that's thing. A bit, it's a pretty big trip, yeah. Yeah, it, it was three weeks. Two, oh, wow. two or three weeks. Yeah, it, she was gone for a while. And... Oh. So the funny thing is that why she's gone, like um, she had this is before like the whole I can connect to Wi-Fi and use unlimited whatever because this flip uh, touch screens weren't even a thing yet, so it was still flip phones and all that and anybody right. that use and roaming roaming was the key thing that anybody that used one second of roaming time paid like six hundred dollars in their bill. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was high <laughs> and so she's in another country so um i think myspace was still a thing and so we're, we talk like once every couple of days she was able to use a the computer there and log into her myspace and we would message back and forth every couple of days um right and so she she's gone all this time and she's like well i think uh I haven't started in almost two months. Like, oh. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so we, we go to the doctor. And, of course, by the, according to the doctor, you know, they do the whole pregnancy test, blood, the blood work preg- pregnancy test and all that stuff. She's pregnant. Uh, a few months right out of high school. Uh, she's been... She's been on this trip for two weeks, two or three weeks, and mm-hmm. she hasn't started in almost two months. So, oh, wow. of course, she's like, okay, I think I think I am. I'm like, all right. So, turns out, turns out she was pregnant. Um, and then responsibility instantly kicks into my head. So, being, being a bum, working a crap job, living in a crap apartment, the very same month that we went to the doctor and found out she was pregnant, we got an apartment. Very, very uh-huh. same. I think it was, I think it was, it was September or October that we found out. And, um, we moved into an apartment that month. Like, all right, oh, wow. we gotta, we, we can't raise a kid in this shithole. So, we instantly just get an apartment. And, mm-hmm. we, we fell, luckily we fell into it. Um, it had, it was both of our first real apartment um, and it had everything we needed, washer and dryer. It was huge. I had three oh, floors. Had a, had a main floor, a uh, upstairs, and then a basement kind of thing. Wow. Wow. No, no, no. It was, it was only two floors. It was a main floor and an upstairs. Um, mm-hmm. And then it was actually a... What, what is eight? Is it quad? Eight, quad eight? No. Single, double, triple, quadruple. Quads is four. Sex, six, sex, six, sep, oct. Uh, oct would be eight, right? Anyway, I think so, a, yeah. Oct, oct, but yeah. Eight. It was an oct, oct plus, oct plex. I, I don't know if I'm reading that word correctly, but um, hmm. it was, it was a duplex, but it was eight, eight duplex. It was eight houses instead of four. So instead of, right. a, instead of a duplex, it was a, I guess it'd be a quadplex, but um, either way, they, it was eight doors instead of four. Um, That's wild. Yeah, so it wasn't like an upstairs, downstairs, you know, I live upstairs, you live downstairs. It wasn't, wasn't apartment style at all. It was it was duplex style with eight doors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, uh, we fell into that, you know, we, um, it was like $600 a month. She was working at a grocery store. I was still working McDonald's and for my friend. Um, and our, the main focus was, um, we'll figure out we'll figure out how we're gonna pay for it. But we have to get out of this hotel room. This is literally what it was. It was a hotel room, and it wasn't a nice one. So, um, 
So yeah, we, we got out of that. And then we we started our family. Mm-hmm. They, I got a... This is about the time that I was uh, transitioning from... I left McDonald's, um, and I started working for my friend full-time, and then this is where I started transitioning into owning my company, where he's like, right. um, uh, you... Hey, how about you create your own company and we'll have a friendly competition and compete against each other. I'm like, okay. And so cool. it was, it was kind of like that time. Uh, right. And then I ended up running the company for 10 years. Wow. Which falls under the, um, like I, I didn't work. Like I've never had a job. Cause like when you, when you own a company, it's when you own a company, it's still work, but it's different. So yeah. It's I know what you're saying. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, because exactly you don't have any set hours, you don't have any set pay. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's you do it at your own pace. It's kind of, it's like a hobby, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That, that pays yeah. you. Mm-hmm. So, so I did that for ten years, and uh, again, we're we're in this two-story duplex. I'm just gonna call it duplex. Cause I don't know what to call it. Um, right. So we're in this two-story duplex. It's me, my girlfriend. And our newborn baby. We're there for a couple years. And I remember we were there in 2000. We had to be there at least in 2007. Because I got somebody knocking on my door. Asking. Uh, they, want, they wanted to give me politic information. Um, and... It was when Obama and somebody else was running, so because mm-hmm. I remember, I remember exactly what I said to this guy, because he wanted to, he wanted to try to like do the whole politician thing, and I said I don't really care what you're going to hear, I already know who's going to win, and he's like, well, if you don't mind me asking, who do you think is going to win? And I said I don't think I know Obama is going to win, and, yeah. was, and this this is at the time that race really wasn't as strong as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, where everyone hates each other just because not not so like racism racism has always been a thing it's still a thing and it's it's probably never going to go away because nobody can come to an agreement neither side can come to an agreement on what can and can't be said so I mean it's racism goes both ways it's not yeah hundred percent yeah it's not just white's fault but I don't even, I don't even want to get into that like it's not not my not my thing not my fight I don't care I'm I'm Indian so. So, like, yeah, like an Indian feather, not die. So, like, if anybody Same. should, be, if anybody, yeah, if anybody should be pissed, it should be us, you know. <laughs> so that's so, right. <laughs> so who, who cares about the white man and the black man? I do get a lot of ben- I do get a lot of benefits for it though. So. Yeah, same. <laughs> so I was like, I don't care about the other races. Like I'm Indian. We're the ones that should be mad. Mm-hmm. But. uh but then again, we own all the casinos. We don't care. We're taking everybody. We're That's taking true. everybody's money equally. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so, um, so yeah, it was that I know it was at least 2007, because the guy came and he, I'm like, yeah, Obama's gonna win. Um, and then I don't remember the year. Um, well, it had to be it had to been 2007. The once again, September October comes around. Or it might have been August September comes around uh i haven't started all right let's go with our doctor (laughs) sure enough baby number two on the way so i'm like all right well like at this point we've established like we've established a home in a sense Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. because we like we have our room our son has his room we have our how we have our apartment with our bills we have our jobs we're, we're we started the foundation of a family right. and i don't i don't know what people define family as but i have the i define it as house yard kids dog jobs cars like the the package the whole package the ideal package is what i call a family or yeah, how, how i how i define when you have a family is that's how i define it um so, or like, all right, well, we only have two bedrooms, and we're not putting both these monsters in the same room because neither one will sleep. They're only, they're, 
both both our kids are exactly three years and one month apart. One is born one is born June sixteenth. The other is born three years later, July sixteenth. Oh wow! So it's crazy. So yeah, to the day, to the day, and so. Um, so we're okay. We're like, all right. At this point, the where this place is too small and costs way too much for four people. Um, I think it was like six, yeah. seven hundred dollars a month. Um, I think it was six fifty, and for some reason the the electricity was so high on it. For some reason, we have no idea why. Really? But yeah, the electricity was like pushing four hundred a month. Like we had to get on the assistant Holy thing where shit. where you had to, where you only paid a certain amount. And right. like it was so bad, we had to get on that. Like, and we don't know why it was like that. Like, it was, were you? We were doing normal, normal electronic usage, normal gas usage, normal heat, normal it's AC. Crazy. Like, it wasn't wasn't freezing cold when it was 110 degrees outside. No, we had it set like 75, 76, you know, like the normal temperature. And then in the winter time, same way, you know, a comfortable 65, 70, whatever, whatever was comfortable. Um, but for some reason, the electric bill was, it was like three, four hundred dollars a month. We have no, we couldn't figure it out. So we, of course we got on the assisted pay thing. You know, we have, we have two babies and mm-hmm. two, we're, we're two kids. I was, um, our firstborn, she was 19. I was 21. Um, and our second born, she was she was 22 I've been 20 I think she was just about to turn 23 and I was 25 um because our my birthday's in July and hers is in January and so I was a year and a half older than her for most of the time <laughs> um <laughs> but then the, the way the way the years work the, I was a year and a half older than her and then the year would pass and then she'd only be like eight months old or something like that. I don't know. The math is weird on it because it's a new year. And anyway, um, I'm sure the math is way wrong on there, but uh, it, it was something weird like that. Uh, so we're like, okay, well, we can't afford two kids in this place that we're in right now. So instead of getting behind on our bills and and you know taking everything, crash and burn. The mm-hmm. we got into, uh, or we got on the list to government assisted housing. Um, it really wasn't. It wasn't Section Eight, so it wasn't like the government pays for the house. It was just right. lower, low income housing is what it was. Um, mm-hmm. So our rent was like four hundred and fifty as opposed to the six hundred and fifty, mm-hmm. and then then the other normal bills. Um, so out of all this. It, so that that's our actually only government assisted thing that we had. Well, and then we had like her insurance, like Medicaid or Medicare, or whatever, whatever the government thing is for that. I think it's Medicaid. So her dad, yeah. but she she only had it while she was pregnant. So because it's so expensive to have a baby, oh, it's yeah, yeah. it's ten thousand dollars to have a baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like, if you were to pay out of pocket, it'd be ju- just for delivery is ten thousand dollars. Um, yeah. They, but then you have all the you have all the after stuff like all the shots and everything. So you have that, and then you have all the the pre op stuff. So you have like all the doctors' visits every couple of weeks. Uh, well, mm-hmm. is, um, do you have kids? I don't remember. No. no. Right. Well, whenever you do, they you're gonna you're gonna have doctors' visits. It's gonna be once a month, and then as as she progresses. Um, it'll be once a month, and then it'll be twice a month, and then it'll be every week, and then <laughs> it'll be like when when she gets really close, when she gets right around forty weeks, it'll be all right. I want to see you. I want to see you today, and I want to see you again in like four days. So, <laughs> uh, but that's that's that only happens like maybe a week, maybe two, <laughs> depending on how much. Right how, to see. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. So that gets expensive. So you have all that too that you have to pay for, and then the then I think it's like every other 
every other visit you get an ultrasound. So you have to pay for that too. So having mm-hmm. a baby is expensive. So having the government assisted insurance, I have no problem with that because we're probably looking at fifty thousand uh, dollars out of hand, out of out of pocket mm-hmm. if we if we didn't have the insurance. Um, and then so then so after you after you have do all that and you have the ten thousand dollars you have a ten thousand dollar baby, then you have three days of hospital stay, and that's yeah. that's like two thousand dollars a night. It's the most expensive hotel I've ever stayed at. So no shit. Yeah, and, and the bed wasn't even comfortable. I had to sleep on the couch. But so yeah, so you're looking at thousands of dollars for a baby. So so yeah, we had the insurance. So, but we never had, we never had government funded housing. Like they, the government never paid for a house. We never had food stamps. Um, I think that's it. That, that's all the government pays for, right? Housing, food stamps, and insurance, right? I guess. I think I so. Guess, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't so know. we we only had one. We only had the insurance out of everything. Um, which, which I'm glad we did. But anyway, so we find this. Um, lower house or low income housing. Uh, this is where it was three floors. It was a main floor, an upstairs, and then a downstairs. We're the, <clears throat> we're we're actually we weren't there for very long. We were there for maybe a year, maybe two, mm-hmm. maybe two, not even that long. But <clears throat> I have something in my throat. Hold on. Yeah, so we were there for it had to have been under two years. I'm trying to think of trying to think of all the the math and years and everything but uh so we we now have two baby boys well we had a three-year-old and then an infant and then we're we're still kids you know we're mid we're early 20s um and so then we're like that's a mom's like all right they we we're outgrowing this uh we're outgrowing this apartment and we don't like the neighborhood and all this kind of stuff. What can we do? And so, luckily, we found at the house that I own now. We found this house mm-hmm. fresh on the market. It was a fix. We knew it was a fixer upper. Um, and at the time, we had so much stuff at the time. Like my mom just got married, uh, remarried, and uh, we had, we had so much extra stuff. Like he had his house. My mom had her house. Um, then we we had a lake house. We had a boat. We had so many cars, and because we we had my car, my girlfriend's car, my mom's car, my mom's husband's car. He had a truck for wow. his boat. He had a boat. Um, then I think between all of us, we had four houses. His house. Wow. I think he, I think it was in the, like right before they got married that he sold his house. So. Like during all this stuff, that he had his house. We had our my mom had her house. They had the lake house, and then my house. So, mm-hmm. so we had all this all this crap. Um, so luckily, luckily, my mom is super good on on money management. I did not pick up mm-hmm. that trait at all from her. I'm horrible. <laughs> with, I'm horrible with money management. Like I, I pay my bills and I spend the rest. So. Right. Which it's it's really bad because I really need to save money. I I'm so bad with money. Um, but I I I pay my necessities. My part I pay my priorities first. Like I pay pay my house and stay, right, right. and then I just spend everything else. Uh, which is what I'm doing now. Like I get with because I'm renting out the house. I get eight hundred dollars a month. They cost me four hundred dollars, three to four hundred dollars to stay somewhere, and then I blow four hundred dollars, and I I need to save it. Um, right. so yeah I'm, I'm horrible with money management but so anyway from I don't remember if this is true or not but what I what I remember but I thought I may have heard is that my mom's husband took out a second mortgage on the lake house to buy my house um yeah. and then and then my mom used all of her credit cards to pay him back I right. think I think that's how it worked. So my house, my house has been paid off since day one. Um, and then I was doing a rent to own to my mom. Mm-hmm. 
I think I think that's how it worked. Um, and so, at the, so during all this, like I'm still running my company during all this, and she's still working up to the grocery store. They were trying to move. They got two two babies in the house now, um, and then we're trying to move into this fixer upper that needs to be fixer uppered before we even move in. You know, um, before we were even le what are they called the um, Inspector, home inspectors, I think, is what it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. Code, they, code enforcement. I think that's what it was. Um, they said legally, before we even move in, we have to get an I beam for. We had to get two I beams for the basement before we could even legally mm -hmm. move in. Um, and then th this house is built. This is like a sixty-year-old house, seventy-year-old house. So it still has asbestos tiles, the basement and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we we try to clean everything up best we can. We get rid of the lib or the kitchen was like the that really thin carpet. Um, they like if you if you drag your foot across it, it wrinkles, you know. That was that kind oh, of carpet. Yeah. Um, very old. It was orange seventies carpet, like bright orange. Um, so that so that had to go, and it reeked of. Pneumonia had it had been had been some kind of piss like dog piss cat piss something, um, so that and that went immediately that was gone, uh, mm -hmm. and then then I had um, tiles or had the asbestos tiles underneath, and or it was it was linoleum but it's like asbestos in it, so we cleaned that oh, up, shit. yeah, so we cleaned that up, cleaned up the basement. They had the same tiles. Uh, so we were finally able to move in. We move into um, a two or three bedroom house from from this apartment. So, and after we were there for a couple of years, the, everything was going good. We're making lots of money. You know, we're, we're living life. We got both our kids, they have their own rooms. All of our bills are easily paid up every, every month uh, with credit. I always pay my bills in credit. Um, I always I either round up 10 years, five or 10, depending on what right. bill it is. And I do that purposely. And I try to put as much credit on every bill that I can. So, mm -hmm. for like, if there is a rainy day, they, um, you know, I don't, I know I don't have to pay $200. I only had to, had to pay like 150 if I have to. Right. You know? Right. Um, which actually worked out because I think. I no, she didn't have the baby yet. Whenever we bought the house, so mm -hmm. I think we bought it in December. Yeah, so she she was a couple months pregnant when we bought the house. Cause oh, our, okay. Yeah, because our youngest, I don't think our youngest was at the. Yeah, you know, he was at the old house. So all right, he had to have been just a baby. So he must have just been born or something. I don't remember. Um. Trying to remember the years, I don't remember them all at all. But, um, but we we use our tax money. Well, I I owned the company, so I didn't get taxes. I didn't get a tax return. Uh, but since she mm -hmm. she had a job, she got a tax return, and we had one kid, so we got the tax booster or whatever it is, or we got the extra right. like three thousand dollars or whatever it was. Um, and so we're like, all right, we know she's pregnant. They we need to ensure that we have um, enough money for all of our bills whenever she goes on maternity leave and we have to do this for three months because she's mm -hmm. gonna because she's gonna have the baby or she's she's probably gonna take like a week or two off before she has the baby and then she's got the baby and then we have uh, we have six weeks that she can't go back to work because of maternity leave uh, so now we're we're already at two months, and then when she goes back to work, it's going to be another two, possibly three weeks before she even gets a check. So we have to, right. we have to, yeah. So, so thinking of it, we have to clear out. We have to make sure we have enough money to pay for three months of of bills. And so, um, mm -hmm. so that year, we took all of our, we took every bit of our tax money, our tax return, and we turned it all into uh, money orders. And we all of our bills are roughly about the same, and so we kind of guesstimated. We we made three months of money orders on five five bills, 
So whenever, oh, wow. yeah. So whenever she had the That's baby, smart. yeah. Whenever she had the baby, we're like, all right, they, we don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about it because the money's spent. Like, um, it, backtrack a little bit. We we made the money orders so we wouldn't spend the money. Mm-hmm. Um, because like when you, you know when you get your tax returns, like, oh, I need to go. Whenever you get your tax return, you suddenly need a bunch of things. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so, right. um, so our priority was. We need to pay the house bills while you're on maternity leave, and so, um, so yeah, we we got three months of rent, so uh, four nine, like thirteen fifty or something like that. Uh, so we got thirteen fifty in three different money orders, or uh, three money orders of four fifty. Um, our uh, our electric was, I think, like. 110 roughly give or take so we got we got three money orders and 150 dollars our gas was mm-hmm. like 40 bucks so we got three money three money orders and 50 dollars um and then i think at the time we had our car insurance so we got money orders and that and all that so we so we spent all of our tax money on money orders for these bills that we knew that she was going to be gone out of work for um and I wasn't making enough money to like make it to do to spend the money that we needed to spend plus pay the bills. Right. The, uh, you know, because we couldn't go out to eat, couldn't go grocery shopping, and all that stuff. If, if I was the sole income, and mm-hmm. she always, and my income was so up and down that like between between months, like one month, I'd make fifty dollars, maybe, and then a next month I'd make two thousand dollars. So it was so right. up and down uh, with mine. They we always had her as the primary everything um, mm-hmm. on on tax one. She was the primary caregiver. She was the primary homeowner. She was the primary everything. Just because she made she made more. I made I think in the end I made more money than she did, but hers was more cons- hers was easier, more consistent, more um, because, trackable. Yeah, yeah, because she had a she had a paycheck. Um, so yeah, that so we had all that. So she was, made her the primary and everything. And like I like I said before, like I would not be like I owe her everything because mm-hmm. she she was the best girl ever. Like she didn't complain about anything. Uh, she didn't complain about anything. She did what she needed to do, and like she got me off the street. She got me off of everything. That I don't know, she I I. <laughs> coming up later in the story like I all this is my fault I really fucked up with her and I lost a really good thing but mm-hmm. you know life's full of mistakes and only thing you can do from only thing you can do is either move on or keep doing them so right. uh, so anyway so now we're, we're moved into our house paying our bills everything's everything's ahead um, and so we're like alright I, I think we're in had to been had to been two thousand thirteen fourteen now, is what you were in, something like that. I think it was two thousand fourteen. I don't I don't remember years anymore. But we're like, all right, well, mm-hmm. we're we're good. So let's get a dog. You know, let's yeah. complete the family. So we go to a kill shelter, or humane society, or something. We go to some some place, and. We we both wanted a husky. We we're looking for a husky, and this place they didn't have any purebred husky. Like we're like, all right, it's gonna cost us a couple hundred dollars. We have the money. We're you know we're we know we know we can spend this amount of money on a dog, mm-hmm. um, and we know it's gonna cost us. Like it's we gotta do we gotta do the shot stuff. We gotta or we have to. They already do them, but we have to pay for the shots and all that stuff. So we're like, all right. Including everything included, we can spend three hundred dollars, or whatever the amount was. We was what we knew we could spend. So we we right. go. We don't see we don't see any huskies or any purebred huskies. We wanted a purebred with the two different color eyes, you know, um, mm-hmm. and the the big snow builds and all that. And that right. the house the house has it's on a half an acre lot. It's a corner lot, so we have a half an acre of uh, property. But we have just over a quarter acre of fenced in land that oh, wow. you know there's plenty plenty of room for the dog to run around with. They, the the mm-hmm. fin 
the longest or from the sides of the house to the back of the fence was 100 feet and then i think the yeah. i think the fences connecting in the back was 120 feet so you know it's, that's mm-hmm. a big yard uh that i had to push bro for many years <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh which was horrible so anyway we're at the, we're at this place and we don't see a purebred husky and we're like well is there anything else they might want like n- they go um well we do have this lab that she's still in quarantine right now but she gets out either like today or tomorrow or something like that because i have to keep in quarantine for a couple of days uh but they're like well we can we can bring her out and so they bring out this black lab and they she got along with the kids she was she was really friendly to the kids and got along with us and everything we're like all right we'll take her and now mm-hmm. i've had i've had this mangly mangly dog for eight years <laughs> so yeah we completed our family yeah. uh, so we had we had our house our fence in yard we had our two kids they had their own rooms we had our car we had two cars and we had our dog like we we have under my definition a family so that's where it was and so then we started having more family problems you know like um we were fighting all the time and i i got lazy and didn't want to do things and so i'm like i got i I don't know, I went through a phase and I just kind of gave up on everything and I didn't care. And this is this is where I was wrong and I don't blame her at all for anything. But uh like it was it's all my fault and like uh, we we ended up splitting up after 10 years and oh, wow. yeah. We we just couldn't of course like of course we fought in the past about things. Um mm-hmm. that's just part of a relationship. But for some reason, this one we couldn't we couldn't bring it back. I think I think this is where my illness comes in. This is where the bipolar gets in, comes in. Um, it, it couldn't. We just couldn't pull this one back together. And so we uh, back in like 2010, like we split once before, but it was only for like a couple months. And they just kind of. Like we we've been together since high school. That she had a she had a kid right out of high school, so she never lived the she never lived like the late teens life, you know. Never like went out to bars. Oh, yeah. Never never went out to bars and clubs and everything because she was she was a responsible mother at at nineteen. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's hey, I don't saying. mean to cut you short, but uh, do you want to wrap this up tomorrow? Uh, sure. How, how far are you along? Do you think? Um, uh, maybe another halfway. No, I'm probably almost done. We can wrap it up tomorrow. Oh, okay. Make it a part two. All right. Well, that's the that's the end of part one. I guess, I guess we're making this a part now. So, getting personal. That's part one. I will continue part two tomorrow. Uh, get quite a bit more. We. Quite a bit more. Like this is all the build up of my life up to a few years ago. Um where all the or all the manic of the anger and and this is where all the anger comes in of of my disorder. The which I'm I was no longer on medication with for obviously. Uh, so it kinda got out of control. Quite a bit. Um but the the next the part two, I guess, that we're going to be picking up tomorrow will be the other half of the disorder, of the bipolar disorder, which would be the depression side, which it takes a completely different turn. But I'm Scribble. Thanks for listening to the IS3 podcast. We will continue this tomorrow.